What I would like to propose as we begin this program today is that we dedicate this room to the pursuit and the dedication to human rights, and that this become the center of the School for Human Rights. Like all great events, agendas are for people that need structure. We are not those people. So today, I offer a more free-formed approach to this meeting, to this gathering, where we can actually take time to celebrate each other's thoughts, each other's passions. So I've been asked to kind of start and lay out the pearls of wisdom for you. Um, I would say um, my upbringing was one of, of privilege. But my parents never let us lose sight of the responsibility that comes with that. And when I was first approached about the Declaration of Human Rights, it really had, it resonated with me in a very strong way. Because my parents, although were, you know, good lifetime, lifelong Democrats, one thing they've always were, um, you know, committed to was just the, the idea of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt. I was a very young child when I first learned of Eleanor Roosevelt. And this idea of that people, people can change things. People can make things better for other people. And it doesn't matter if you come from privilege or not. The idea is that we're all in this together. We can all help each other. And that's why this document rang so true to me, was because these are tenets that we should all strive to just live by, that everybody has a right to free speech. Everybody has a right to food. Everybody has a right to shelter. These are just human rights. Everybody has a right to health care. So with that said, I really want us to really take this moment in time to really appreciate you know, that we have this, this eth efficacy among us, that we all believe that we're here for a reason, and that Balboa is special. So this is less of an opportunity for people to talk at you as much as it is people to celebrate common values and common ideas. Um, Ms. Ritter? I'd now like to introduce Assistant Principal Susan Ritter. I brought my pink slip. I was wearing it earlier today, but I left it in my office. Um, if we're about anything, I think, here at Bell, I think we're about human rights, and we're about humans and relationships. And I, I, same thing, I was raised with privilege, this resonated to me through my parents who got it here when they went here a long time ago. So I think human rights has been a part of this institution for a long, long time. They graduated here in 1936. So uh, we are just passing along uh, something that's been present here for a long time. We now are really giving it uh, a bigger face, a bigger name, and a more clear picture of what we mean. And I see people involved in human rights every day here in small ways, in the conversations that we have with our students, in the relationships with the, that we have, and also in the larger ways in these projects. And you're going to see some of those today um, in the assemblies and in the celebrations. So um, this is something that's been from the past. The Declaration of Human Rights is actually older than I am. Not by much, but by a little. Um, and uh, the preparation for that meaningful document to come to, uh, to, to come into creation was started long before 60 years ago, 61 years ago now. We, one of our objectives is not only to educate our kids about human rights and this particular Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but also to embed 
this into our curriculum. And again, you're going to see where that is happening. It isn't anything that would happen overnight. We couldn't just say, okay, one, two, three, let's start doing it. But in small ways, larger and larger every day, every department in classrooms all over this building, we have some amazing things going on. And you're going to hear from some of the students themselves that um, it's working. And it began with one woman who came to us and said, I've got this great idea. And I think we'd like to do it at Bell. And we were immediately uh, complimented. Part of the relationship was Jerry Garcia, who attended Balboa, the Grateful Dead, and the Rex Foundation was kind of that connection. We sort of have built on that. And I think that they're very happy that they did find a home every year <laughs> with bailing wire and tape and last minute hysteria. We go, oh my god, we have another assembly. We've done it for four years. They just keep getting better. And um, so we could not have, well, we could have done this, but we probably would not have done this if it had not been for uh, a couple of people, and I'm sure uh, they'll all be introduced, but I want now to turn over uh, this to the, the lady who has done so much to make all this a reality, uh, the director of the Rex Foundation, Sandy Soka. It is really very exciting to have this special occasion here because what really came as just this idea that as we started thinking at the Rex Foundation about how to raise more awareness about what it means to think of human rights as a way of unifying many different individual and even group acts, whether it's for civil rights, or women's rights or any kinds of issues that it was important to see that as Principal Kerr said, we're all in this together. And what our common uh, tie is that we all care about what happens to all other human beings besides ourselves. And that's the whole idea of human rights. But what we were finding was very few people in the United States actually know about this document that really paved the way for thinking that way called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But I'm having a feeling uh, that if I asked in this room now, how many of you know about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I would expect to see a lot of hands go up. Would that be true? How many people know about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? OK. This is breaking the odds around the country. And it's thanks to the vision of, at the time that we started, it was Susan Ritter um, with Patricia Gray was principal and, and wanting to carry it out with Kevin Kerr. And then the, the work of so many of the teachers here that said, yes, we'd like to be part of this. So what we've been doing these last four years, you've been part, as you know, this pilot to look at how do we raise awareness? How do we bring attention to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that's in the standards for social studies across California and do it in a way that demonstrates um, how important the creative arts are, actually, as a part of learning. It was a, 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 a joint kind of pilot to really highlight the importance of the document, but also the importance of the creative arts. And it started when you all saw the performance that Destiny Arts put on that first time in 2006 called The World As It Could Be, A Declaration of Human Rights. And then the second year, The World As It Could Be, Where There Is A Will, There Is A Way, in which this tree was presented, and we'll hear more about that soon. And since then, you, the students and teachers at Balboa, have taken on this project as your own to demonstrate how you can have some exciting teaching going on in your classes where you're including the creative arts in different ways to help think about the issues related to the document itself and to human rights in general. So with that, as we go forward, what I'd like, and I'd like to recognize Studio Baycat, who you've seen in the background at each of our performances, and once again here to help us record this special occasion, because all of this is part of curriculum now that is going to help teachers and students all across the country look at how to use this project themselves. So we are all doing something together, even right now. And um, what I'd like is to welcome the students and teachers who were involved in this past year's 
performance that was put on on December 10th, the 61st anniversary of the signing of the Universal Declaration, to say a few words about what it has meant to them to study about the Universal Declaration and to use the creative arts as part of that process. Hey guys, um, I'm Malik Douglas. Um, so, at the, the human rights performance, I felt that, that I learned that this world is made for all human beings. And we have the freedom of speech, and we have the freedom of free, free speech, and the freedom from fear. We need to not fear, and we have to have, be released from that. So from doing this performance, I felt like that I got to learn about the different problems in this world, and that we need to get, we need to express those problems, and to, we need to express those problems to like all the people in the U.S., you know? And that's what we did for the performance. Uh, it made me understand more about it made me understand more about like our problems in our community and our problems in our world. And um, yeah, just how we need to have more information about it. So then when we become older, we could go out, reach out more and just give a little bit more love to this world. So. All right. All right. Creative arts is another perspective and other way for people to learn and understand about UDHR. We watch the plays and acts and we ask ourselves, is it right? And what can we do? We need to know our rights in order to use them to protect us and help us. I feel very reluctant to be able to participate in this project. I feel that it is a great opportunity for students to learn more about their rights. And it's also a great opportunity for students to discuss such an important topic. In this project, students were able to express their knowledge, passion, and creativity for this topic. It is great to discuss this important topic like this and work together with their classmates cooperatively. <laughs> Hi, my name is Diane Polaganis. I'm currently a junior here at Babo High School. Um, Let's see, where do I want to start? Uh, maybe I could go backwards, or maybe I could rewind a little bit. Um, without even knowing about the UDHR, I realized a couple of days ago that I've been part of this UDHR my whole life. Um, um, when um, I first came into this country around 1999 as um, a tourist, and, so, um, and because of a family event, um, instead of becoming a tourist, they changed our status so that we can become residents of this country. And so this was really important to me because I'm part of this. I'm part of the minority group. I'm part of this human rights where um, immigration is a problem right now. And so for me, whenever I hear immigration in the news, I get heartbroken because I'm still part of that immigration um, system right, right now. And so I have sympathy for the people who are going through the same thing as I am. And as um, I grew up here in this country half of my life, I learned more about my rights and um, thanks to people who have um, taught it to me. And the very first time um, I actually participated in something about human rights was part of the Bravo Theater and I was part of uh, the U Generation health, health Group, Sex Ed Group. And um, it's a really provocative topic that nobody talks about um, what happens in the young people's lives and why it's important to know about facts about sex or about knowing yourself or mental health or women's health as um, she has stated and um, so that was when I realized that I'm really part of this EDHR thing and, and that's when I started to realize what our rights are in terms of individuality and, and also race and then um, I, I was part of UDHR two years ago, before December 10th, and I wrote a song called Here It Is Free with Emily Cleon. Um, and I was really amazed of how much I can, as an artist, I can grow to learn more about UDHR that way. And then December 10th this, of last year, 
um, being able to perform with a larger group was even more powerful to me because I didn't know that in less than one year you can create an impact with a big audience and so um, I love singing, I love dancing, and I love acting. I love the arts and that's how I express UDHR and that gives me more motivation to tell people that whatever your talents are, you can express that. You can express your pains about what's, what's my rights and how come I can't um, play that in my, in my society and so I feel good about being able to create a model for people who wants to voice out their opinion in their own talents. And, um, and so, to basically close up my, um, what I'm trying to say is that don't be afraid of, sh of showing, if, for example, if you're good in computer, you can always use that for UDHR. If you're good at, you know, office work, you can apply for a company and, and do your part that way to UDHR. And so, but for me personally, I feel like immigration and I feel like people's rights of being able to talk about their own personal problems without anyone judging them is important to me. So immigration and talking about individual problems that has to do with human rights that people just won't judge you. And so I want to be a role model for that. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Sarah. Uh, sorry, uh, I have these cards here, but I felt like it would probably just be better if I spoke my mind instead of what I wrote. Um, well, when I first started, um, participating in the human rights thing, I was just, I was really taken back by it because I was thinking like, wait a minute, like why are, why do people not realize that, you know, this should be for everyone, you know, like why are these people having to fight for this? So it was, it was like a bittersweet, you know, epiphany. So it, it, it was just a great experience. Um, and I felt like by putting this in a form of a play, students really got to see what's going on in the world because, you know, like, yeah, kids go on the internet, but they don't search human rights. They don't search all this other stuff that's going on and how people are, you know, getting stripped away from things that they work hard for. And that thing, and those things that we have, you know, that come so easily to us, you know, it's just, I just think that, like, from this, I personally have gained, like, you know, personal appreciation appreciation and I think all these other students have as well because this is important you know it's like may, maybe some of you guys have seen the human rights struggle maybe in our own school you know like for example what like Deanne was saying with immigration people just acting very negative towards each other or um, maybe just feminist and you know like male antagonists trying to like put down other girls you know and those are human rights that we need to strive to just keep going and you know keep alive. So that's pretty much it. So. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nguyen. I'm a junior here at Balboa. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Okay. Um, so learning about UDHR was pretty interesting. Um, it still kind of pains me to know that there's still a lot of these rights that are violated um, still to this day in other parts of the world. Um, we're pretty much fortunate to kind of have, <laughs> um, to pretty, yeah, what are you trying to thought? Okay. Um, so participating in the December 10th performance was an amazing experience. I thought we all connected um, as students and um, as teachers. Um, in the making of the performance. We all fought for human rights. We all learned about each other and we all taught each other. Um, and the creative arts helped me think about the UDHR in a more abstract but definite way. Um, I think, you know, sometimes when students, like documents such as the Constitution and um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a little bit hard to understand for people my age. Um, but having these skits be performed made it easier for me to understand, and I'm sure that a lot of the students feel the same way. And, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, I'm uh, Peter Altaffer, and I'm just going to really talk about what everyone else was. The fact that I think the whole cast pathway was really lucky to have this UDHR come into us. Because, I mean, every single one of our classes built something around this. Like, our animation class, we were having to build, like, animations to the UDHR. English, we were doing poetry and other things around the UDHR. 
And I was really thankful that CAST is allowed to do this, but I really believe that this should be broadened and open to every single pathway, so that everyone has that chance to show what they want creatively on stage, not just the CAST pathway. So it was really amazing for our pathway to be able to have this, and it'd be great if we get law in there, AOIT and the rest, and just have everyone come together, because it's just that many more people coming together and bringing their ideas. And it just allows everyone to say what they want creatively, even if they're not in the creative pathway. Um, otherwise, I mean, I had a great time going up and performing. I directed the final piece on it, and that was an amazing experience being able to direct. Like, instead of directing the animation like I usually do, I got to direct something that was live action. So I mean, that was like physically right there instead of just little pieces of binary with on the computer. It was something physical, something I could put out there and just let everyone see it. And maybe not even just give it to the pathways, but to every single class is that during that certain time of the year when the performance is being performed, classes should also, no matter what age group they are, be introduced to said things. Because, I mean, there's no time is too early to learn about the rights that everyone should have and should be born with. Hey guys, um, I'm Liani Tu, um, a junior here at Balboa High. Um, I thought it was a good opportunity for me to learn and participate in the UADHR because it made me learn more about how, um, how people didn't have a choice before and um, the things we can do now, we couldn't do them before. Um, I think it's also something that everyone should know and learn about because without our rights, then our world now would, I guess, be corrupt because like guys would be taking advantage of girls um, and our voices will not be heard. Um, creative arts helped me think more about the human rights because we, as in me and my group, we had to act out a scene of the human rights play and it made me think in someone else's shoes of how it would be like if that was me. And I don't want to be selfish and say, oh, hey, that was then, this is now. Um, even though this is present day, um, that was still our history, and we should learn about that too. Hey, hey, good afternoon. <laughs> so, all right, so all right, I'm gonna get serious. Um, all right, so in this vast emptiness of space, you're living on a little pale blue dot. You know what I'm talking about, right? So, are we alone? I don't know. But compared to the galactic space and its flow of time and the ubiquitous law of physics, we are so insignificant. Like Richard Dawkins has said, we are all going to die. So, what makes us significant? Like, what's the meaning of life? It's not 42. <laughs> it's UDHR. It, it gives us a sense of what's life. I mean, it's not just a document. It's a message. It's a meaning. So therefore, we need art. We need animation, cast, media art to bring this message, this meaning to every individual on this little planet. All right, so um, before I end, Anybody would like to buy a pen? <laughs> wait, 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 please. All right, so we are a half profiting organization. Half profiting, right? 50% of the profit is going to Haiti for reconstruction. We are serious. We are actually rebuilding all the schools and infrastructure in Haiti we built on. So uh, we are half profiting. Every pen. 150 each. So uh, if you're interested, come to me after this. Hi, I'm Carrie. I did this decoration of human rights not that long like the rest of you, but I kind of like doing it and I'm gonna start reading. <laughs> I feel like I grew up at 
five. I feel like I grew up a lot because I never get to perform in shows, but now I do. My my parents are supportive. People now know that mobility is important. It does doesn't matter if you use any kids any kind of equipment kids of production in sixth period in my class with Miss Simpson. She told us that a production was being put on for human rights and I decided I'd join it. It was an internship and it was acting so I thought it would be good for me and uh, I got there and I realized how little I knew about human rights and this production really helped me learn about that. Um, I think the best way to learn things is through the arts and it was really good to do this production because I feel like it's stereotypical for people our age to not know much about what's going on in our society. And it's good to educate our school about uh, human rights. And I forgot the rest of my speech, so that's it. <laughs> my name's JR. I'm a junior here at Balboa. But we should definitely give another round of applause for the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The reason why I did this performance was that Miss Simpson introduced it to me, and then like she was like, like I don't know, she was like, you should do this. I was like, yeah, I should do this. And then like I was super stoked, so I was like, I'll oh, put my name for everything. And then once I'm like, I read every document, like I was like, only certain of them, like certain uh, specific documents, like applied to me. So then I did what like I wanted to do. So thank you, Miss Simpson. You're awesome. Um, <clears throat> so my speech. Me personally think about learning about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and actually participating in the performance. I learn more about rights in different parts of the world. Like I actually got to learn when I read the document about my student in peace, I like me and my group, we had to interpret like how we were supposed to like like Respond to it. Okay. Um, it made us. It made me differ about our rights as an individual. Like technically, like other people in certain parts of the world, they have different rights. As over here in the United States, we have different rights as well. But then we, as an individual, take personal like responsibilities in keeping that rights. So we fight and strive for it. The creative arts helped us think more about the given document to us as a group. We as a whole work together and try the best to make, make you have an individual and visual preference about what happened in the time. It made us understand more about things are in life and what struggles you have to go through and strive together to surpass it. Hello, I'm Robin, also in Nabo. Um, when this project first started off, I really didn't know much about it. Um, but 
throughout the process of being inside this project, I do some research and stuff. Um, at the at the very beginning, I felt like this is nothing that probably we don't even need to learn about it because it's common sense. But then, um, throughout the whole course, through the research and everything, the script that everyone wrote, the whatever we were performing, the show that we put on, um, I feel like a lot of people still doesn't know about this. Um, and that's like a real big problem inside this world. Um, I feel like everyone should get treated the same way as you want it to be treated. Um, because there is something called karma that actually go back to you. Um, maybe some of you guys don't believe in karma, but then karma do exist. Um, yeah, and this, this whole project, the whole process really helped me a lot on understanding how to treat another human being. And I feel like everyone should do the same. And even though this declaration might not be a law, but then there is a penalty to it. It's the way you will be treated in the future. And I think everyone should still follow. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm John. And, uh, <laughs> um, performing in this uh, in the, in the December uh, Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights. Um, like be before, before that performance, I didn't really have an idea of what human rights were. I just like sort of just did it for the credit. But uh, yeah. Um, but once I once I started doing the performance and I read the document and and I I sort of like understood what they were talking about, and I could really relate to it because uh, every day in my life, in some way or another, I'm discriminated because of my height or my, my color of my skin or some way. And I feel like when I performed, I gave it like all I could 100% because like, I wanted to send a message out to everyone saying that no matter where you come from, what race you are, you know, it doesn't matter. People should see you through like only one thing that's a human being. You know, you shouldn't be called an alien just because you come from a different country or, you know, stuff like that. I think that's, that's really, like, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like this performance, like, really, like, shaped my, my, my person. Like, it's made me stronger and made me realize that, you know, no matter where you come from, um, you are a human and you always will be a human and people should see you as that and only that. And, um, uh, yeah, I expressed a lot of uh, emotions and experiences onto the performance, and I feel like every school should be taught and given a chance to, to express what they have deep down inside of them, because deep down inside of me, I, you know, I, I always feel discriminated, but um, I guess through this performance, it helped me speak out a little bit and made, uh, made me express what I feel deep down inside. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Eli. I'm a senior here at Baboa. And I'm the, the, music, the musician of the performance. I got to uh, accompany most of the acts on electric bass. And I also wrote um, the one <coughs> sketch about healthcare. And uh, I'm going to be honest and say that for my first three years of high school, when we did this performance. Uh, it, I it just let it go over my head. I didn't really pay attention. No one really drilled it into me that it was such an important thing. I assumed that being America, well, we have all these things, I took it for granted. And then at some point in this past year, before the performance, um, I was getting ready to start to stop listening. And then someone mentioned that America hadn't signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And I, I was outraged, and I thought, how can a superpower, an, an international superpower, that should be an example to every other country in the world, not sign such a basic document that guarantees such basic rights that not enough people get? And so that's why I got involved. And also, I have a personal, I have a personal connection to the need for universal health care. My mother's a nurse, and she sees horrible, horrible um, 
conditions that can't be treated due to lack of universal health care. And I'm appalled by such thoughts. <laughs> and I am greatly honored to have been a part of this production, and I'm glad that this school is so involved in this program, and I hope that we can expand to the program can expand to other schools and become more well known and eventually be brought up as a nationwide issue some, someday, soon, I hope soon, and that this nation will change and correct its wrongs. That's all I have to say. I want to acknowledge and have a, uh, there's really no way to express our thanks to the teachers who have started out with this four years ago and with no real extra time or compensation and just working it in as they could um, have supported this effort and have really made it happen because like everything else, if it doesn't happen in the classroom, it doesn't happen. Uh, and they have given so much of their time and themselves and uh, somebody's gonna catch me if I don't get everybody, but when I call, I want these people to come on up here uh, so we can thank them and they may want to say a little something about what they have done. Melinda Simpson, Michael Arnold, Jeff Larson, George Lee, Miss Kiefer, um, Kayla, the Balboa teachers who have really have stuck with this every year for four years. I don't know if you want to just say just a, a little something on how you made that happen, but sure. they made it happen. Right. Um, again, I'm, I'm really thankful that all the, all the students who got up here and spoke. I'm really, I'm really deeply touched because after you know, 15 years of being here in San Francisco and being at Balboa, um, it really makes me proud that, that our school, that the, the, the people that are here, the students, the teachers, the faculty, everybody who works here day in and day out has, has really done an amazing job to you know, kind of transform a school from a place where it's like, you know, it's like, we're not just here to get a piece of paper, we're not here to just kind of shuffle you through the doors. We're here to teach you about you know, what it feels to be connected to each other. And again, as an, as an artist, um, you know, I've long felt and believed that the people who, who make music, who perform, who create things, we're, we're the people who help see, you know, help people see things in new ways. We challenge you to think about things in ways that you never thought of something before. Um, you know, one of the things that brought me to San Francisco was a group called Food Not Bombs. I was a I was a wild-eyed, high-throwing anarchist, and uh, I got arrested serving free food to people in the United Nations Plaza. Uh, right on the, the same time they were celebrating the anniversary of this document, the, the city police were arresting people for serving free food. And it was one of the reasons I came to San Francisco, and I continued my teaching program here. And I came, I went to visit all kinds of schools in San Francisco, South San Francisco, and I came and I met George, and you know, I was like, Balboa is where I wanted to be. It was where I saw, like, I could make a difference. You know, and it was where people needed a difference made. And uh, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let other people talk, too. But again, I'm really happy to be here, and, and I really respect everyone deeply. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted, uh, I won't stand in front of you, but uh, I think that it's very important that the art, I think that arts are very important. They give us self-expression, -ex pardon me, and um, it takes a lot of courage to go out on stage in front of a, a group of students and peers and speak and perform and take, you know, whatever gets thrown back at you. and. Uh, Everybody who did that should be congratulated immensely for it. You know, I think we, it's, you know, that's something that would, I would like to see this school grow to, so everybody feels comfortable walking in front of their peers and, and expressing themselves in some way. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's a human right too. You know, so uh, and human rights are something that should be reflected upon every year, and I think. It's great that we do this on December 10th, and there will always be human rights to be reflected upon and thought about, and, and issues to be brought to other people's attention that are not, you know, 
not known to the general public. So uh, I know that I'm kind of running out of things to say here. So <laughs> pass the ball. today with all of the students and um, just how proud I am of you and what you accomplished this year. It's been amazing. Um, just, you know, kind of making this a little bit political, um, but, you know, there's been a lot of talk about budget cuts for the arts and, you know, and I know everybody in here feels passionately about that. And um, just to think about, you know, with history, math, science, English are the heart of education. Um, without arts, we sort of lose our soul, and um, and I think that it's really important to have our soul and um, <coughs> express and be able to express that as much as possible, um, and for our students to learn how to do that as well. So. Um, you know, when I first started here, this was a uh, school where they categorize us as a school that did not work, you know, and I think what we saw here today is a celebration of when education is actually working. When we see our students speak, they see their relevance in the larger context of society and how their individual, you know, efforts is actually changing the world. I think that with this, we're giving them hope and they're giving us hope. So I wish that more of San Francisco, more of the educational world can see what we do here, the collaboration with other agencies and what we do here, collaboration among teachers and also the collaboration between the students, kind of just make this thing that we call education work. And I think that's what we have here today. Thank you. Well, I teach classes for students who have been impacted by the prison and jail system. And in one way or the or in one way or another, whether they've been incarcerated or their family members have been incarcerated. And um, so we focused on five rights from the UDHR that dealt with prisoners' rights and rights of the incarcerated, that sort of thing. And I think that participating in this production with other fellow students that my students don't necessarily have classes with um, really sort of enabled them to be heard about the issues that are impacting their lives daily. So I really appreciate uh, all the collaboration. have disabilities and like Claire said a lot of my students don't often have the opportunities to work alongside their peers so this is a great opportunity for the students who wanted to do so to really make a presence known and uh, so that was really I think invaluable uh, for those guys and it, it was um, in addition to that we made a collage that focused on article 13 which is uh, mobility every person has the right freedom to travel within and without their country. That, that particular article um, really resonated with my group. Um, we had originally thought about doing four or five articles, but we kind of honed in on this one. And I think that the students were able to really individualize that and, uh, and celebrate it. So it was really great to participate. Uh, this has been a, a really monumental program. I want to thank the students speaking. I feel just so beautifully, courageously, and articulately about what this project meant. I was personally moved, and I think many of us were, and I want to thank you for your commitment to, to just being part of this and for speaking so, so clearly about it. And I, I just want to make one quick note, and that is that when it came to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the United States, along with all the countries in the General Assembly at that time, did sign that, that declaration. Now, there are other treaties that are still outstanding for the US to sign, and I hope you'll continue to even learn about that because it's very important. Um, but I don't want to leave any of us thinking that what happened to the United States back in 1948, because actually at that time, Eleanor Roosevelt was really the, uh, the shepherd of the document and helped make that happen. So 
it's just important that we understand that doc document as a as setting the pace and tone for many treaties that happen, and there are still issues with what the United States has helped lead to have done and where we perhaps still need to do some work in a leadership role. And I, I hope that, that this will be something to look into further as you keep working on this very important issue. And before we get to the final tree dedication, I just wanted to take a moment and bring up uh, Ellen Sebastian Chang and John Maines, who, as many of you know Ellen, because she's been involved since the beginning to help direct the, the programs that you've seen. Um, and John Maines was the designer of this beautiful tree, the creator of it, and we're getting ready to actually officially dedicate this to Balboa High School, but I just wanted you to hear from them what was behind the idea of putting this tree together. So can I welcome you? So I'm Ellen Sebastian Chang, and I would like to say that I come from a life of privilege as well. Different than your principal or your vice principal, but I also come from a life of privilege. And the privilege being that I was loved by my working class African American grandparents who grew up in the South, in the segregated South, and who grew up both with a third grade education and a fourth grade education. And that's as far as they were educated. But that's who I grew up with, and they taught me the tenets of human right, which is to respect every human being, no matter their ethnicity, their class. And these are not the words that they use, but they just said, you got to respect people because you don't know their story. You don't know where they came from and how they got to where they are today. She goes, if it's a bum on the streets, if it's a person in a suit, start with respect. And I have to say that when I came onto this project, I'm a college educated woman. And I don't know where I was in high school when it was being taught, but I sure don't remember it. If it was taught, I was absent mentally, physically, but I had no, no knowledge of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights until I started this project. And I'm a middle-aged woman. And I, so I say that, that you're learning it, you're hearing it, but it was the arts that brought me to it, and I'm a champion for it for the rest of my life. And I, it's really, really, I'm really proud of everybody that I had an opportunity to work with here. Balboa has been an incredible experience. And Susan Ritter is right. There were days and times on this production where we were pulling our hair out and yelling and fighting. And, so, and then the curtain opened, and we were a team. And that, to me, is also how human beings collaborate together. It's about sticking together knowing how to fight and come through it alive and whole and present and together, irrespective of your ethnicity, irrespective of your physicality. So I'm really, really thankful to the Rex Foundation for bringing me into this project and educating me and me continuing to be educated. And so this tree, John Maine, I'm going to turn it over to him, and he's going to tell you how he and I sort of, I don't know, how do we come up with this thing? <laughs> it's how we come up with everything. It's just sort of like, it happens in our minds before it happens in our talk. But I just want to say, well, I had a lot to say. I brought a whole book. <laughs> but I really feel humbled that everything's been said. It's, the tree, building a tree, is a collaborative effort. I have two wonderful partners who are welders. and collaborators in every sense of the word, but I didn't know, literally. I knew it extended to me and Alan, and Alan, the lighting designer, but how far the collaboration extends to all of you guys, and all of you guys, and Susan, and teachers, on and on, it's just, it really humbles me. It's mind boggling. I get like this, so don't worry about it. If you want to see some of the first things, I, got, I brought some of the very, Ellen and I sat in a coffee shop, and she said, Johnny, we're doing this thing, the Declaration of Human Rights. What do you think? And as we were with Kobitsa, we said, a tree. A tree is such a powerful symbol. One thing, a tree has not always been used, as many people know, for good. Many times it was used for some very 
very evil things, particularly in the old segregated South and stuff, where I'm from too. In fact, I'm older than the Declaration of Human Rights by a couple of years. And I also was raised in the segregated South on the other end of the thing. So I understand a lot about what that is. But when you look at a tree and you look at a border and you look at a line, and this is Mexico, and this is the United States, or this is Canada, and this is the United States, or this is Afghanistan, and this is Russia. The tree doesn't care about that. There's no, it doesn't perceive that line. Its roots go past it, its branches go over it. Um, that's what it was about to me, that kind of power of the tree. And then also realizing, wow, we can hang, we can have it be interactive. Kids can hang, as we're going to do in the dedication, and I'm going to be quiet soon. Usually I tell a Cajun joke when I'm up in front of the audience, but we're going to have you guys all hang your leaves on the tree. And we, anybody that wants to hang any thought, memory, dream, anything about human rights is welcome to hang it on there. And I think it'll, it'll accumulate every year as a new class comes through, maybe the trees will go in the base just like real trees do, and new leaves will go on with new thoughts and new dreams that people have about what the world might could be if we all really respected each other and knew what, had the knowledge. You know, everything everybody said resonated to me when, when someone said, the United States hasn't signed the Declaration of Human Rights. And that, sure, that outrages us, but you know why they don't sign it? Because they're afraid. And that's the one thing we have to get past, probably more than anything that'll lead to all of us really respecting each other, this fear. We, we don't know, so we fear. So if we can get past that fear, we can probably have some glimmer of hope that the Declaration of Human Rights will actually manifest itself in all of our lives. So take a look. I'll pass this around. Actually, the very first drawings that we did were in a coffee shop on a little scratch sheet. And there's a few of the plans and stuff. You guys can just look at them. And while we were on the phone, I actually did one in my sketchbook. I always keep a sketchbook. You can actually make a living as an artist, guys. You know, yes. he, he knows that too. <laughs> if you keep sketchbooks, that's the thing. I first talked to Susan about this project, and it was four years ago, and it was Susan that said, I think this will be really great, and that's how we got going. And so Balboa was, if, it, if Balboa hadn't said yes, we might not be here today, four years later, with pilot curriculum that we're getting ready now to disseminate. And it just seems that this tree that has, you now know stands for such beauty and spirit of human rights and creativity, that there is just only one place where it belongs, and that is at Balboa High School. And so I wanted to take this opportunity on behalf of everyone at the Rex Foundation to thank you, all of you students and teachers and administrators, for being so willing to be part of something that we hope will, has had value already that I think we've all heard and have been touched by, and that now, like this tree, is going to have many, many, many positive effects um, as we move forward and that you're going to be making a difference all across the country and, and who knows how much further beyond. So the tree now belongs to Balboa. <laughs> yeah. I have to say I had this uh, girlfriend a long time ago. I'm sure you all have these stories. But one time, this we broke up a long time ago, and we were talking on the phone, and she said, you know, you were, you were never one of those tree huggers. <laughs> and I just kind of said, well, I don't think you, knew, you really knew me that well. And I hung up the phone. At that time, I was living up in, on Mount Tam. I walked out my door, and I just grabbed the first redwood tree I saw, and said, that's it. You are a much better friend and companion than this girlfriend ever was. So, thank you, Sandy and the Rex Foundation. Very much appreciated.